Welcome back. Joining me now, Liberal Senator Conchetta Ferravanti Wells and Labor MP Peter Murphy, who's in Canberra. Good evening. Scott Morrison evening. today sought to clarify comments that he made in an article that suggested Australia's international border would remain closed indefinitely. In a statement, the PM said Australia's COVID suppression strategy has not changed to, el to an elimination strategy, nor is zero cases our goal as reported today. These statements were not made, were misreported. There will always be cases as we return Australians home from overseas. International borders will only open when it's safe to do so. After this, Victoria's acting premier, James Molino, said that we cannot open our borders until the federal government rolls out the vaccine program. Whilst there are some countries that are doing well in terms of rolling out the vaccine and we're seeing a, a, a lowering in transmission, uh, other parts of the world are on fire right now. So the Prime Minister is absolutely correct to say that this will be with us for some time. Peter, are the delays in the vaccination program ultimately slowing us from opening up to the rest of the world? I think they're having real consequences to the economy, to the way people live, as um, we've been talking about uh, for weeks and months now, for confidence in the vaccine and, as you say, um, opening up borders. And it, it's something that really has to be clarified from the Prime Minister, because we had those comments today uh, and then we also had reports that the Treasurer has based the budget on the borders opening next year. Um, so how are we going to have any certainty uh, about the budget, let alone what life is going to look like until we get the vaccine rolled out and we get some consistency from the Prime Minister? Conchetta Ferravanti, well, surely this can't go on forever. How long do you think we should close our borders for until what percentage of people have been vaccinated? <laughs> Well, I think that uh, the comments that were made by the Treasurer today uh, are very clear, and that is that we have to learn to live and deal with the, vac uh, deal with the virus uh, with and as the vaccine rolls out. There is no doubt that there have been problems with the vaccine rollout, but uh, the reality is that as the vaccine uh, does roll out, then I think that uh, we are going to have to see uh, the economy opening up more and we're going to have to look at uh, how the borders are going to open. I mean, the Prime Minister can say all he likes that we don't have an elimination or a zero tolerance strategy, but the reality is for every Premier across the country, with the exception of Gladys Berejiklian, we are living with a zero tolerance and elimination strategy. And Peter, my question to you is that even when people are vaccinated, there's still going to be the risk of getting other variants of the virus and uh, people can contract it anyway when they're vaccinated. We're not going to have the whole population vaccinated. That's just not realistic. So we can't stay closed forever. At what point should we be opening up? Yeah. Uh I'm not the person to say the exact time when we open up and obviously there's going to be health advice that will be important. But what you've really hit on is the fact that there is no national strategy for quarantine, that we don't have a nationally consistent quarantine program. We aren't going to be able to rely on hotels which aren't fit for purpose, you know, which have been made as good as um, can be in order to act as quarantine. We can't keep relying on that for years to come. And this is something that as a country, as a globe, we are going to be dealing with for years to come. And until the Prime Minister stops relying on a conversation he had with the Premiers this time last year and actually stands up and takes responsibility for quarantine, your question will remain, when are we going to be able to open up? Conchetta, is the federal government taking responsibility for quarantine the answer to this? Well, the issue is that uh, clearly National Cabinet has been in discussion in relation to this whole thing. And the reason why the National Cabinet, as I understood, was established was to ensure that there was um, 
conversation between the states uh, and territories and the national government. And this is the sort of thing that should be discussed and should be resolved at national cabinet. Look, the reality is that the responses of the states should be proportionate. And I have to say that certainly as I speak to people, there is disquiet at how uh, lockdowns have been imposed and how um, rights have been affected. And clearly, I go back to the comments that the Treasurer uh, made today, and that is we have to learn how to live with this virus. And that includes the states taking a proportionate response. And I think that there is disquiet amongst the Australian public that sometimes those responses have not been proportionate. The Prime Minister this week had to backtrack on a decision to ban flights from India. Particularly controversial was his threat to send people to jail. Uh, if they did come back here, that was very quickly walked back. Uh, the flights from India are opening back up now on the 15th. Peter, was it a mistake to threaten returning Australians with jail time in the first place? Absolutely. If Australian citizenship and an Australian passport doesn't mean that you can rely on your own government to look after you when you're in another country in a time of crisis, then, you know, we are not the country that we should be. And Conchetta talked about uh, proportionate responses. The federal government has had 12 months, six months, um, at the very least, to prepare for this exact situation and to have proper quarantine facilities. And we've now seen the Prime Minister say, well, we'll increase the number of people who can come into Howard Springs in the Northern Territory and we'll start repatriating um, Indians. That should have been able, or Australian Indians, that should have been able to have um, happened weeks, if not months ago, because the federal government and the prime minister should have shown some leadership, taken some responsibility and had a plan for this scenario. To think that Australian citizens were left in limbo, thinking that if they tried to come home, they could be put in jail, it's a disgrace. Conchata, I want to ask you two things. Firstly, were you one of the MPs? There was a backbench revolt on this issue, I've already, we've already heard from James Patterson tonight. He was unhappy with it. Were you one of the MPs who went and expressed an opinion uh, to the senior government leadership team? But secondly, I also want to ask you about the conflict in the left's position about this. They want the borders closed, but then they want us to take more people who might probably would be infected from India. Shari, uh, two points, if I may. One, I am troubled by this decision, particularly the precedent uh, that it sets, especially in relation to making it illegal for Australians to come home. I am particularly troubled because of the work uh, that uh, my committee has done, and I am chair of the Senate uh, Standing Committee on the Scrutiny of Delegated Legislation, and we have looked at, in particular, the Biosecurity Act and the provisions of the Biosecurity Act, which were inserted into the Act in its passage in 2015 so that the provisions in relation to uh, jail terms and fines and or both uh, were imposed at that time. And uh, our committee has looked at uh, the, in particular, the emergency provisions that have been imposed and we have recommended that uh, determinations under the Biosecurity Act should be disallowable by Parliament and should be able to be scrutinised and, if required, vetoed. So had these provisions been able to be scrutinised by our Parliament, then we would have had the opportunity to have a discussion about it and, if required, uh, modify those provisions. And that includes bans, it includes people travelling to different parts of Australia. So this is a very important issue and I really do hope that the government does accept the recommendation of the Joint of the committee that I chair. Uh, and this is a bipartisan committee, and it is a committee mm. that has been established since 1932. And I do hope that the parliament accepts our recommendations. Just before we go, Peter, you are battling breast cancer and you wanted a plea for more federal funding towards this issue in the budget. Well, yes, um, there can always be more money um, and more investment in research, but I also wanted to actually 
talk about some bipartisan success. Uh, Lucy Wicks, the Liberal member for Robertson, and I established Parliamentary Friends of Women's Health. Um, me, so I could uh, talk predominantly about breast cancer, but a range of other issues. And Lucy also um, has her own particular interest. And we had the Breast Cancer Network uh, up here recently for the launch um, with amazing women talking about not just what it's like to have breast cancer, but the care that's needed afterwards and supporting a push from the Breast Cancer Network of Australia for funding to be able to um, provide that. And the Minister for Health announced yesterday that the federal government in the budget will provide funding to the Breast Cancer Network of Australia, and he specifically mentioned the parliamentary uh, Friends of Women's Health. And we don't often, I think, enjoy and um, talk about the successes that a lot of voices um, went into gaining um, from both sides of the parliament, and you can tell I'm particularly happy about that success. Yeah, that is wonderful news and, and, as you say, very rare to see both sides working together. And we wish you all the best, of course, as you continue to fight this disease. Peter Murphy, Conchetta Veravanti-Wells, thank you both very much for your time. Thank you. Thank you.